good afternoon, good evening, wherever everyone is. Uh, it's morning for me, 9 a.m., a little too early to head down to the public house and get a light alcoholic beverage. But uh, why don't we talk about something um, that I want to talk about, which is Vault with AKS Pod Identity. Now, it's only a little broken, and, uh, and, and we'll find out more about what that means in a little bit. Um, so what is pod identity and, and what does it have to do with Vault? Well, there's kind of this challenge here. And the challenge is that static identities in general are, they're bad. Like we don't like those anymore. And that was kind of the promise of what Vault could do is it can dynamically generate a token or an identity for you. And then when uh, the lease is ended or you need to revoke it, that identity goes away. You're not storing static usernames and passwords because that's bad. You don't want to do that. Um, the next challenge is that the recommended deployment model for Vault these days, if you're, uh, if you're looking on the documentation, is that it should be deployed as containers on Kubernetes, which, I mean, that really does make sense when you think about the way that you would want to manage and deploy Vault. Kubernetes is a natural fit for it. It's an easy way to get the load balancing, to get the HA, uh, to expand out additional Vault pods if you need them. Um, you would need Enterprise to do true load balancing, but still, I mean, it's it makes a lot of sense from that perspective. The third challenge is that, and this is more of an Azure challenge, is that Azure resources should also not have statically defined credentials. They shouldn't be using usernames and passwords. They should be using what are called uh, managed service, uh, managed security identities. And so these are identities that are associated with Azure VMs or other resources. And when they want to access something else, they ask for a token from Azure Active Directory and they get that token. That's token is good for a certain amount of time. And then they can use that token to get permissions to other resources in Azure. So sounds kind of similar to what Vault is doing. These are all the challenges that we want to sort of meet when we're deploying Vault and using it within the context of Azure. So like, what is the solution? And the solution is, uh, it's AKS pod identity. So the idea here is that AKS pod identity allows pods within your Azure Kubernetes service cluster to use managed service identities to access other things in Azure. So what is it at a high level? Um, to start off with, AKS pod identity is an open source project from Microsoft. Probably not surprising that it's from Microsoft since it's running on Azure Kubernetes service, but maybe a little surprising it's open source. I mean, they've been better about that in general, but still every time I see open source in Microsoft, I'm like, what? Okay. Um, what does it do? It assigns either a service principle or a managed security identity to nodes. And honestly, you really don't want to go with the service principle. That's basically a username and password. You'd really rather go with the MSI whenever you can. Uh, and it matches a pod to a particular identity in Azure. So when a pod spins up, it identifies it as associated with a specific identity and gives it access to request tokens as that identity. And then it provides the credentials through the instance metadata service. So if anybody's familiar with Azure or AWS, um, all the virtual machines on both of those have a metadata service that's available locally through a special address. And when they want, when an instance wants to get more information about itself or request a token, it can do that through the metadata service. So that's AKS pod identity. So how are we going to use this in the context of Vault? Well, th there's two ways that you can use it. The first is when you're configuring Vault to use Azure authentication, you can either set it to use a service principle, which as we've established, that's basically a username and password. You don't want to do that because it's static. Or you can use a an MSI. So we'd rather use an MSI. And if we're going to deploy Vault on AKS, then using pod identity to provide that MSI makes a lot of sense. The other way that you might use it is to access Vault through that Azure authentication that you've set up. So if you have uh, a key value store in Vault and you want to grant access to specific resources in Azure, 
using Azure authentication, if those resources are pods, you could, in theory, use Azure uh, AKS pod identity to grant access to those secrets for those specific pods. So those are the kind of two ways to use it. And if we want to, well, why don't I bring up what I have running right now? So find my, okay, yay. So I use VS Code um, for those who aren't familiar with it. And uh, I did create a script here and the idea is that it stands up um, Vault in an AKS cluster and enables the managed service server interface and all of that jazz. Um, so this assumes you already have an AKS cluster running and that we've deployed Vault on that AKS cluster. If we look at the Vault values, this is a YAML file to complement the Helm chart that you can use to deploy Vault on Kubernetes. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I basically grabbed this exact YAML file from the Vault docs and made a couple of key changes that enable it to use the pod identity. So before I get into what those changes are, it probably would make sense to understand what the components are that make up pod identity. So the components that make up pod identity First, we have what's called the Managed Identity Controller. And if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know that the Managed Identity Controller is used, uh, well, a controller is used to interact with custom resource definitions uh, and, and act as an operator within the context of Kubernetes. That's exactly what Managed Identity Controller does. It works with CRDs um, to handle some of the identity components. It also interacts with the cluster itself to assign identities to specific nodes. And it does that through the service principle that's created when AKS, uh, when an AKS cluster is generated. You can actually have it use a different authentication method, but out of the box, it uses the service principle. And I know we don't wanna use service principles, but sometimes you just kind of have to. Um, it doesn't statically store the username and password anywhere though. Then we have one or more nodes that make up our Kubernetes cluster. Um, then there's another set of pods. They are a daemon set and they are the node managed, uh, node managed identity. And it basically, since it's a daemon set in Kubernetes, that means that one or more of these pods runs on every single node within the cluster and it helps provide identity services to other pods running on that cluster or on that node, I should say. Then there's gonna be one or more Azure identities that you want to associate with pods that are running within the cluster. And finally, there's the instance metadata service that's running on all of the nodes in the cluster that you can reference through a special IP address. So how does this, well, actually, why don't we Go back to here. And so I deployed Vault using a Helm chart and I also deployed the Azure identity using a Helm chart. So the way to do that, um, and this is on GitHub, so you don't have to scribble down any notes or anything. Um, you first have to add the repository. So there's an AAD pod identity repository that you can add. And then all you have to do is run Helm install, give it a name, and then the chart is called AAD pod identity. You can alter some values if you need to, but it works pretty well just out of the box using the Helm chart. Uh, if you do that, let's just do cube CTL and we'll get pods. So you can see down at the bottom and maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger. There we go. That should be hopefully nice and big for everyone. Um, we've got two MIC pods running at the top and then three NMI pods running. So those two MIC, those are the managed identity controllers. And then the three NMI, those are part of, are the daemon sets. Uh, if we do cube CTL and get the nodes in the cluster, or if I could spell that properly, uh, <laughs> we would see there's three nodes in the cluster. So there's an NMI pod for each node that exists in the cluster. So that's what I have deployed through the Helm chart. Um, I feel like there's a couple other things that maybe I wanted to talk about. So that's why I wrote down all the info. Okay, so yeah, I look at that. Um, 
right, the custom resource definition. So we'll look at that in a second. How does this identity association take place? Now we have this managed identity controller. It talks to custom resources and uh, of type Azure Identity. And in those custom resources, when you create a custom an Azure Identity custom resource, you're basically saying, here's an identity that I want the managed identity controller to use. In this case, I created an identity called Vault MSI and dropped it in the Azure Identity a Azure Identity CR. And now the managed infrastructure control or managed identity controller knows about that identity. The way that it actually binds that identity is there's a second custom resource called Azure Identity Binding. And the, all that's in that is basically a pod label. If pods are spun up with this specific label, then I want you to bind the identity that's referenced in this CR. So if we go back to our example environment, if I do get CRDs, no, not that. If I do get CRDs, we can see there's four custom resources that get created as part of the Helm chart. Um, the one that we're interested in for the identities is this Azure Identities. So let me just show that one real quick. So I've got a demo MSI, so that's one Azure Identity I've added to this cluster. And then I have a Vault MSI, and that's the other one. The Vault is the one that Vault is going to use for Azure, uh, Azure Auth configuration. And then the demo MSI could be used by pods to access a secret in Vault. The actual YAML for creating this custom resource is here, and there's really not much in here. The important things is you have to give it a name so you can refer to it. And then you need to give it a resource ID, which is the full resource ID of that managed identity, and a client ID, which is the client ID of that managed identity, and a type. So type zero is an MSI, and type one is a service principle. So once you have all that configured, you can submit this using cube apply, and it'll create a custom resource. Now the uh, MIC knows about this identity. And then in terms of the binding, uh, let's go ahead and get the binding custom resources. So I've got two bindings here. One's to bind the demo identity to a particular pod label, and the other one's to bind a vault identity to a particular label. If we look at the pod binding YAML, um, all that has in it is the Azure identity that you want to use, so Vault MSI, and then what's the pod label? If you give a pod this label, uh, it's, I can't remember the key, but if the value in the key value pair is Vault, then it will associate this identity with that pod. So let's see how that actually works. So let's say I spun up my Vault Helm chart, my Vault pod, and that's got a pod label assigned to it that matches up with one of those identities, then the MIC is going to see, oh, so it's basically always running and watching for new pods to be spun up. And it's gonna say, hey, you have a label that I care about. And that corresponds to an identity that you have for the binding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my AKS service principle and I am going to assign that identity to the node that this pod is running on. And if we had multiple pods for Vault, if we were doing like three pods or something and they were on different nodes, then the MIC would assign this Vault MSI to each node that's running one of these pods. If we look at the values I used for the Helm chart when I spun up Vault, and scroll down a little bit here. This is the important part, this extra labels part. I added an extra label for the pods that were gonna be part of the vault deployment. And the label is AAD pod ID binding vault. And that was the label that it needed to associate that vault MSI with the, uh, the vault pod. So now vault should be able to use that MSI as part of its uh, Azure authentication. If we go to, I think, I, yep, okay. So this is the Vault deployment and I'm already logged in and this is the Azure uh, authentication method that I enabled. 
we can view the configuration. Uh, will it actually show me? Yep, so here's the tenant ID and the resource, and I haven't given it any other information. You could, in theory, give it a client ID and secret if you're using a service principle, but because it can use the MSI, all we have to do is give it the tenant ID, which is the Azure Active Directory uh, that we want to use for authentication, and then the resource it has to reach out to. And then it'll just get the MSI information itself by acquiring a token through the metadata service. So let's see how that process would work. So the token acquisition goes a little bit like this. The node on is running, uh, the pod is running on a node and it wants to contact the instance metadata service. So it will reach out to the IP address where it thinks that instance metadata service should be living. And what's actually happening in the background is that NMI pod that's running on every single node, it intercepts that traffic to that specific IP address. It's basically acting as a proxy and then it proxies it to the actual instance metadata service on whatever node that the pod is currently running on. And then that instance metadata service can take care of the actual request for an access token for that Vault MSI. So that's sort of the process that's happening in the background, but Vault has no idea about that. The pod thinks it's talking directly to that instance metadata service and it gets a token. So it's happy, everything's working properly. Uh, if we go back to uh, code um, in here in the setup, let me scroll up a little bit. Uh, if we look for, okay, here's a curl command that uses that metadata uh, IP address. So this IP address here, the 169.254.169.254, that's the metadata instance metadata service IP address that it can use. And that's what's actually being proxied to that M NMI pod. And then that NMI pod takes the information that's being passed within the curl request and then proxies that to the actual instance metadata service on whatever pod it's currently running on. Um, so that's how it gets the token. And so it can you can configure it for Azure authentication. There is a slight problem with the other half of the equation. If you wanted to use this to authenticate a pod to vault, to access a key value store or something else on Vault to, to get a token and log in. Azure authentication on Vault only supports system assigned MSIs. System assigned MSIs are managed service identities that are created when a resource is spun up or if you configure it after the fact, it is pinned to that one resource. It can't be reassigned to any other resource. So if you spin up an Azure virtual machine and say, I want it to have an identity, that identity is a system assigned identity and you can't assign it to anything else. Which in the context of what we're trying to do, which is moving this identity around to different nodes in our cluster, that's not going to work. So what pod identity does is it uses what's called user assigned MSIs. So these are managed security identities that can be assigned to multiple resources within Azure, including multiple nodes within Kubernetes. What that means, unfortunately, is the Azure authentication can't be used for pods yet. Uh, there's actually an issue uh, feature enhancement on the Vault GitHub asking for this additional functionality to be added to the Azure auth method to enable it to use the, uh, the user assigned MSIs as a way to authenticate as well as the system assigned. So you can get your vault pod up and running and have it use the, the user assigned MSI to reach out and validate things in Azure, that portion of it works. But when a pod wants to acquire a token and then authenticate against Vault to get a token from Vault and access resources, that's where it kind of falls down. If we go back to um, the environment here, uh, let me scroll down a little bit. I have a command in here somewhere because I am terrible at typing. So I spun up a pod running Nginx with a proper label uh, assigned to it 
so that it would get that uh, demo MSI. And if I run this, I can just get a uh, shell into that particular pod. So there we go. All right, so I'm in that pod now. And if I run this command here, so this is a curl request and it's hitting the metadata identity service. And it's essentially requesting a token for the resource management.azure.com. So it's saying, hey, can you give me a, a JavaScript web token that I can then use to authenticate against other resources in Azure? So if I run this down here, I'll get a response. So let me just echo the response. And I'll put it through JQ so it's a little easier to read. So this is this long access token that it gives us. So this shows that it is the pods actually able to reach out and talk to the instance metadata service through the NMI and get that access token. So it's all happy with that. But the problem is when you go to use this access token against Vault, Vault says, wait a minute, you're not using a system assigned MSI, you're using a user assigned. And it actually doesn't even say that. It says, I can't find this specific resource type uh, of virtual machine or virtual machine skill set, which was confusing at first because it was like, well, but it is running on a virtual machine or uh, actually a node in a virtual machine skill set. So of course you can find it. And then I realized it's looking for an identity of that type of resource. And since it can't find it, it doesn't know how to look for the user assigned MSI. So it's a little bit of an issue for now. You could use a service principle instead for the pods that are want, that you want to talk to Vault, but that kind of defeats the whole purpose of using the MSI in the first place. So while you could do it, eh, not recommended. Um, let's see, what else did I want to show in here? Um, I did wanna look at the identity binding a little bit. So we have our identity bindings. Um, if we wanna see where those identities have been associated, there's a custom resource type called use Azure assigned identities. Oh, well, I'm still in the pod. That's not very helpful. Okay, so if I run that, I should get back two assignments here. And it's basically letting me know which pods have an identity assigned to them. And I could do a describe to get all the YAML that makes up that custom resource. But I think the name really tells you everything. It tells you which pod has been assigned that identity and then what identity has been assigned to that pod. So demo, whatever, whatever has got the demo MSI assigned to it and vault has the vault MSI assigned to it. So that's if you ever want to check which uh, identities have been associated with which pods, there's a custom resource that tracks that. And then there's a fourth custom resource that tracks exceptions, which that's a whole other topic around why you might want to use exceptions for pods that shouldn't get an identity. Uh, but we can you know, leave that to another conversation that's not really pertinent to the way that Vault was configured. Uh, how am I doing for time? I'm actually doing good for time. Wow, I probably just talked really fast. Um, if you wanted to go through setting this up yourself, uh, like I said, this, this script is, it's not 100% of the way there. I didn't get a chance to vet everything in it. Um, so I think after the presentation, I'm gonna go back and clean it up a little bit so it's usable and check that into uh, GitHub. But um, essentially what you have to do is create an Azure identity that you wanna use for the Vault MSI. Um, and then you also have to give that certain permissions. You have to basically give that identity contributor permissions over uh, whatever's going to be authenticating uh, against your vault deployment. So if you have a resource group that has a bunch of virtual machines in it that are gonna be using the Azure authentication, you have to give contributor a role, or actually it's there's slightly smaller roles for that service print for that MSI so that vault can check and make sure uh, that those virtual machines have an MSI assigned to them. Uh, and then you have to deploy the charts for uh, Azure pod identity, which I showed before. So that's pretty straightforward. 
and then create the pod identity and pod identity binding custom resources. Um, and then you can install Vault. So in order to do that, there's not actually an official Helm repository. It's just a GitHub repo at the moment. So you have to clone that and then deploy it using Helm. Um, and then within, once you have Vault deployed, you then have to enable the Azure authentication. So the command for that is just Vault auth enable Azure. Uh, and then you can write the config with your tenant ID and the resource. And it's going to know since you didn't provide any uh, client ID and client secret that you're using MSI. Uh, and then you can create a role if you're gonna try to do the pod um, authentication to access a, a key value store. Though, like I said, that doesn't quite work yet. Um, you could probably do it with a service principle, but for right now, um, I would just keep track of the issue on GitHub and see when it gets resolved. Or if you are someone who knows how to program in Go, you could try to fix that. <laughs> it is open source after all. I am not, and I don't pretend to be. So uh, that should do it for um, for my talk. Uh, if you want to know more about me, I'm Ned Bellavance. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter. It's Ned1313. I have a website, nedinthecloud.com, uh, if you want to check that out. If you're looking for the repository that will have the, the scripts and resources to do this yourself, uh, it's my GitHub is Ned1313 also, uh, and the repo is HashiTalks AKS pod ID. If you just go to my repository, uh, go to my account, it should be easy to find it. Um, if you're interested in doing more and learning more about Vault, um, I actually have a getting started course uh, all about Vault on Pluralsight. So if you go to this uh, bit.ly link, it'll take you to that course. I also uh, managed to finagle uh, about 15 uh, 30-day passes from Pluralsight to give out. So if you hit me up on Twitter with a DM, uh, the first 15 people that do, I will give you this 30-day uh, code. And it is, you don't need to put in a credit card or anything like that. It's just a, a voucher that'll get you 30 days of, of Pluralsight for free. Uh, so hit me up on Twitter, Ned1313 with a DM. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Jackie. Thank you so much. That was great. <laughs> um, if you don't mind checking it out, there's a bunch of comments in YouTube going on. And I just had a oh question for you too from there, okay. actually. I don't okay. know if I missed it, but um, are you going to be publicly sharing the demo? And is it available at a link if so? Uh, so the... Oh, it's here. <laughs> yeah, that, Git, that GitHub link is, it has what I was just showing. Uh, but I do need to clean it up a little bit. Um, you know, I was banging away on it last night, <laughs> trying to get all the commands in there. Um, ideally, I want to have a Terraform uh, configuration that deploys the AKS cluster and the identities for you, so you don't have to mess around with that. But that's maybe by the end of the weekend, I'm hoping. So yeah, just keep an eye on the repo. Um, I'll keep it updated. Perfect. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so I, much. Uh, sure. And